Hey, Bastish B here for 64K, and welcome to another episode of Shoot 'em Up Decades. And welcome back. If you've never watched this show before, I'm going to review three different shoot 'em ups from three different decades. And at the end, we'll have a look at what each one of these games managed to bring to the genre. And so for our first game, we're going to jump back to the early days of the arcade scene. Garus was released in the arcades in 1983 by Konami. The game is a pseudo 3D shoot 'em up that can be best described as a mashup of two 1981 arcade games, Galaga by Namco and Tempest by Atari. 1983 was still the early days for Konami in terms of the arcade division. They were originally founded in 1969 by Kagamase Kazuki who is still to this day the current chairman of the company. Minato Tokyo is where their main headquarters are currently situated and with Kazuki's guidance they produced their first arcade releases in 1978. Just like most Japanese companies at the time they eventually branched out into consoles as well dabbling with the releases on the Atari 2600 before throwing massive support behind the Japanese computer the MSX and eventually the NES where many of their most beloved franchises made their debuts. Garus itself was a brainchild of game design and producer Yoshiki Okamoto, whose previous game before this was the excellent Time Pilot. But after the release of Garus, he left Konami for Capcom, and there he designed and produced countless classics such as 1942, Final Fight, Street Fighter 2, and many more, before resigning from Capcom in 2003 and forming his own company. The turnaround for home ports was pretty rapid back then, and Garus appeared everywhere, including the Atari 2600, Commodore 64, ColecoVision, NES, and that's just to name a few. The game's plot has you trying to make your way back to Earth. Every stage gets you one planet closer. The game plays like Galaga, with streams of bad guys flying in and taking position in formation as you blast away at them. The difference is you can move 360 degrees around the whole screen, blasting them from all angles. The game employs a pretty good fake 3D look that works pretty well and was really impressive at the time. I was lucky enough to have this machine in my local cafe close to where I lived as a kid, right next to the commando cabinet, and subsequently played this a ton back then in its original form. Besides the aliens that you are blasting, there are also invincible asteroids to avoid, and also alien satellites that are attacking you, and if you kill them, you get the much needed weapons upgrade. Bonus stages kick in once you reach the next planet, which are really fun shooting galleries where dying is not possible. And if you've been wondering why I've been playing the classical music score Tokata and Fugu in D minor, ba ba. Well, it's actually the game's soundtrack, which is a bizarre choice, but it works so well in this game, and used to have me humming this piece all the way home after blowing all my quarters. This is a classic and simple arcade game that you should definitely try if you haven't already. It's available on the Xbox 360 Arcade, the PS1 Konami Arcade Classics Compilation, or the excellent Konami Collector's Series Arcade Advance on the GBA if you want some portable blasting action. And next up we got a shoot 'em up from the early days of the Sega Mega Drive. Musha was released in 1990 by Compile exclusively for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. Musha was a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up that definitely looked different from the rest. But before we get into that, let's take a quick look at the company that made it. Compile was formed in 1983 and eventually shut its doors in 2003. They were formed by Masamitsu Nitani and predominantly did shoot 'em ups in the 80s and more puzzle based games in the 90s like the Puyo Puyo games for Sega. In the early days, just like Konami, they focused on the Japanese computer, the MSX, where they created Xanak and Alast, two very well received shoot 'em ups. They also formed a long lasting relationship with Sega and ported games like Borderline and NSUB to Sega's SG-1000 console. Sega in turn offered to make their Puyo Puyo puzzle game into an arcade machine and it proved a massive success in Japan. And back to Musha, just like all shoot 'em ups it has a totally irrelevant plot involving a mega computer that's threatening Earth's destruction, you know the usual nonsense. But the present the presentation of the story is very cool and is inspired by all the awesome anime and manga of the time and is really really well done. Musha is technically part of the Alest shoot 'em up series that Compile started on the MSX in 
SX and was actually going to be called LS2 until they decided to give it its own identity. Although the style has been done a million times since 1990, Bush's mixture of ancient Japan and mech designs was really quite unique for the time. It may not be the first game to mix these styles, but for me it really stood out visually. You have your usual selections of upgrades like lasers, explosives and shield effects which you can pick up during the levels. And if you pick up the same weapon twice in a row, it upgrades it. There's also these weird coke can things that are flying about and if you shoot a bunch of them you acquire mini drones which come and help you and they can be moved around on screen to different formations to suit the current action. And just like the Super NES classic XLA, every time you get hit you lose a piece of your weaponry until the final kill shot. Another cool aspect of this game is the music by Toshiaki Sakoda which are these really fast paced almost metal inspired tunes that really sync up well with the action. Sometimes with shooters I feel the soundtrack gets a little bit lost in all the destruction but in this one it's very much the heart of the action in every way. If you like his music you should also check out his great soundtracks to Spree Gun and Treasure Hunter G for more musical goodness. This game is just one of the many excellent exclusive shoot 'em ups on the Mega Drive slash Genesis that I'm going to cover in future episodes. You should also check out Compile's shoot 'em up back history catalog. You won't be disappointed. And for our third and final game for today we're going to jump right into the middle of a classic console's life cycle and check out a real gem. Mars Matrix was developed by Takumi and released in 2000 in the arcades by Capcom. It was swiftly ported to the Dreamcast for a 2001 release. As I mentioned in episode 1 of this series, Toplan, a massive Japanese arcade company, went bust in 1994, but out of those ashes, many new shoot 'em up companies formed from all the ex employees. We already looked at Cave in the last episode. But another excellent company that was created was Takumi, who made their headquarters in Shinjuku, Tokyo. Takumi wasted no time, and by 1995 they started pumping out excellent arcade shoot 'em ups, not only for themselves, but for other companies as well, like Taito and Capcom. Some of their most well known games were Twin Cobra 2 and Geiger Wing 1 and 2. Mars Matrix appeared right near the middle of Takumi's life cycle. The story for the game is your standard shoot 'em up nonsense involving Mars setting up an army and rebelling against Earth. So we have to send a lone fighter to crush the rebellion and kill the leader. Like I said, standard shoot 'em up nonsense. <laughs> Story aside, this game delivers in every other way and then some. You get your choice of two different ships in the game. The red one has high speed, a cool spread shot, but lower damage output. The blue one on the other hand has a slower speed, but rapid straight laser shots that do much more damage overall. The choice is yours. As soon as you start this vertical shooter, you'll realize you are in bullet hell bliss. The fast paced destruction does not let up for a second and had me hooked immediately when I started playing this initially. The simplicity of the gameplay is what really did it though. The A button does almost everything. Rapid fire regular shots, quick close range shotgun blasts, being able to suck in all your opponent's bullets and blast them back at them, or just charging up fully and then just blowing up everything on the screen. It's so simple and only takes a game or two to get comfortable with the whole setup. We have six levels of mayhem to blast through as you try to chop down the rebels and take out the bosses, who are tricky but not too tough. Even though the bullets are flowing like crazy, I felt like I always had a chance at dodging everything, which is not something you can usually say for games in the genre. You also don't pick up weapons in this game, but instead you pick up these experience cubes from killing stuff, which upgrades your weapon's power. The graphics do employ that mid to late 90s silicon graphics rendered look that was very popular at the time, and they are definitely an acquired taste. The destruction animation and sheer amount of stuff happening always made up for it in my box. It's a good looking game, don't get me wrong, it just looks a little bit dated when played in retrospect. Music is your usual Japanese arcade pair. It works well and has some good toe tappers in the mix. The Dreamcast version also sports a host of extra modes and added content that definitely prolongs the life of the slightly short shooter. It's just a pity we never got to see a sequel. Takumi went defunct in 2009 unfortunately, so all the more reason to give this one a blast. It's well worth it. Game over. So why was Garus here? Well, it's an early Konami game which is always cool to look at. It has, you can fly around the screen 360 degrees. I know there were games like that before, like Tempest and stuff. But it just employs this really cool like, fake 3D look that really like sucked me in when I played it originally. And it still plays really well. It's not just a gimmick, it actually does add a lot of cool stuff to the gameplay. And secondly, the soundtrack is just super unique using Bach's Toccata. It's really crazy, but when I used to play that back in the day, I just used to just 
get into my head and I really love it. So Musha is here because it employs this really cool mixture of like traditional Japanese style look mixed with robots and mech. It just gives the game a whole different look than anything else I'd played at the time. It still looks really good. The sprite work is fantastic in that game, so is all the parallax scrolling. The soundtrack too is pretty damn awesome. I'd never heard a game that used like a kind of a metal, like hard rock kind of sound in like infused into it that just uh, seemed to complement the game so well, even though it like was showing like traditional Japanese kind of stuff mixed with robots. Somehow it all works and it just it's a great game from a great series, the AVS series, that I want to cover more of also in the future. I wanted to show Mars Matrix because of the really simplicity of the gameplay. You basically just use one button for the most part for almost everything and it's just the way you use it and it reminded me of playing old games on older systems. It shows that you don't need to like have like 50 buttons to make a game better and uh, it plays really well. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it's just simplicity at its best. It's such a fun game too. Also like the unique style of it, the look of it, it's definitely something that's come and gone. You don't see graphics like that anymore just because uh, we've kind of moved on from that kind of look, that kind of late 90s look. But I still think, even though it's not to anybody's taste, I still think it looks kind of cool and it's definitely a game that needs to be checked out. And that's a wrap for another episode of Shoot 'em Up Decades. Thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. If you could like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.